I think the key is play play tight with all five guys and like try to pump him when he when we can and like oh, he's gonna make a place and sometimes he dangle you but like that's why we have a Bobby. <laughs> All right, the famous Iron Man once said, we have a Hulk. The Panthers right. are saying, we have a Bobby. That is right. Sergey Bobrovsky <laughs> dominated game one. The Panthers come out on top. We are now here for game two and hunt for the cup. Mike Cuneo alongside Steve Goldstein. Goldie, let's start right there with Sergey Bobrovsky the night he had. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl and company, they had their chances. Bobrovsky wasn't having it. He was unbelievable. The first half of that game, the high danger shots that he faced, uh, the opportunities at the net, Sergei Bobrovsky was on top of his game. Now, so far in the playoffs before that game one, Mike, he hasn't been asked to do that more than, what, three, four times a game. Yeah. And that's the way this Panther system on DePaul Maurice is set up defensively, that Sure, everybody's going to get some quality at some point, but they just don't give up the quantity. That wasn't the case the first half of game one. The encouraging thing to me is when you break down that first game, Mike, uh, Edmonton can say, hey, you know, we like it. We're, we got our chances. Second half of the game, they did not get as many chances. And in the third period, the Panthers, the best third period team in hockey, really clamped it down. They really did. Sergey Bobrovsky has now given up just five total goals in the last four games. That's excellent. The Panthers penalty kill, putting the clamps on as well. We saw them shut out the Oilers three for three on when was it? Saturday. All these days are blending, these days, all these days are blending together. We spent so much time in this building. Yeah. Um, what did the Panthers do on that penalty kill? What were they able to get to to stop such a potent offense? Well, Mike, you know I don't want to plagiarize, but I will. Okay. We got a Bobby, got as, as Miko right. Miko said. Right. You know, a lot of times the Panther penalty kill, you know, you look at the four and you look at the job they do, mm -hmm. but they had plenty of shots. Yeah. You know, your best penalty killer in hockey has to be your goaltender. You'd rather not the goalie have to face the shots, sure. but they are so good uh, and I also think there's a little bit of an adjustment you know um, Edmonton is high end they snap it around really well and the Panthers want to be um, aggressive but you know you get aggressive and they'll move it around but at the same time if you start to sit back into that box in the middle they're still going to get their chances yeah. so you want to be aggressive I thought the penalty kill got better as the game went on and they gave them nothing in the six on five but it's a huge challenge it's a dynamic power play with you know the best offensive player in the world and sir uh, excuse me Alexander Barkov playing very well in those penalty kills yeah. as well for the Panthers but let's listen to Gustav Forzing one of the Panthers defensemen let's hear what he had to say about stopping that Oilers penalty yeah, obviously they have a great power play. I think uh, you could see how effective they can be. I think we, we did a good job. We kept them on the outside and let Bob see the puck most of the time. So I think uh, we got to stick with it, uh, keep putting the pressure on them. Uh, they did not make things easy on the penalty kill, obviously. Also, Connor McDavid, he had his moments, but Sam Bennett then showed up. What did they do to him later in the game? especially on the rougher side, that may have a lingering effect going into game two and beyond. Well, the Panthers have done this throughout the playoffs to these players. Nobody likes to get hit. Now, you got to catch him in order to hit him, and Sam Bennett got, got, got Connor McDavid pretty good. You know, the Panthers, part of their game plan is to be a heavy team, mm -hmm. and by the time you get to games four, five, and six, and we saw this against the Rangers, we saw it throughout the Tampa series with these big offensive stars. Look, McDavid and Dreisaitl look great, but Kucherov and Panarin are pretty good, too. They don't right. have the size, but they're pretty good as well so the continuous five-man unit against Connor McDavid knowing when he's on the ice had a play but when you have a chance to get a hit on him you do so he had six shots on goal I thought half of them were really good opportunities and Bobrovsky against McDavid I mean it's a great matchup the other key for the Panthers is you know they've got to clamp down those other players you know Nugent right. Hopkins and Henrique had those breakaways they Bobrovsky sure made the saves it's not a very deep offensive team this Edmonton team if you keep McDavid and Dreisaitl at bay you should be able to beat them three more times. Let's stay right there because we saw McDavid and Dreisaitl end up on the same line, and obviously that, effect, that has a trickle-down effect. So do you think Chris Knobloch goes to that early, or do you, does, he, does he keep Dreisaitl where he typically is on that other line? Well, look, I'm not going to question it. The coach came in. They started the season 2-9-1. and one. They were 31st in the yeah. NHL. Knobloch walks in. They're in the Stanley Cup final. Uh -huh. Against a deep team like the Panthers, 
I don't think it's the smart move. They do it about 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. They do it when they're behind. They'll do it after they kill a penalty because McDavid and Dreisaitl do not kill penalties. So then they put them out there together against those penalty killers that were on the ice. It's great strategy. But in general, when you look up and down that lineup for Edmonton, if it's me, I'd rather see them separate. I think it's better for the Panthers when they're together because then you got some matchups you really like because the Panthers are a deeper team. So the Cats were able to shut them down at least in part in game one, but head coach Paul Maurice is not getting in, lulled into a false sense of security there. Let's hear what he had to say about those two in game one. And I mean this respectfully to all of you because it, it's me too. You have become desensitized to how good those two players are. And I understand why. You, you see it every night, and they are so dynamic and so special. But after a while, you get used to it to the point that you'll start saying, why doesn't it happen every shift? <laughs> well, it almost does. Um, th th they are truly true sp special players because of all aspects of the game. You can do all things right and still not stop them. So you have to have layers. You have to have gap. But I don't know how the heck you gap that speed. They're just dynamic. All right, Goldie, let's swing things back around to the Panthers talk. E.T. Lusterinen did not play in the final a year ago. Shot out of a cannon here in game one of this time, this time around. Hidden weapon. Yeah. There's a dozen players in this series probably that are going to be talked about before Etu Losterinen. He has been phenomenal, along with Lundell and Tarasenko, that depth line, that third line. No one's been able to match up with it. I don't think Edmonton can match up with it. He's on the ice late in the game to get the empty net goal. They put him on that wing with Barkov and Reinhardt for defensive purposes when it's six on five for Edmonton. Mm -hmm. Etu played nearly 18 minutes played more than Matthew Kachuk yeah. played in this game, played more than, than, than a lot of that Bennett line played. Mm -hmm. He is a weapon. And I remember when Paul Maurice got this job two years ago, Mike, I was talking to him and he said, you know what the real key is to get those two young Finnish guys up to speed, Anton Lundell and Etu Losterine. And that's been a big focus. Those two guys, I'll throw Lundell in there as well. Mm -hmm. Not going to be talked about a whole lot, huge factors. And that line Probably for me, Mike, and we talked about this last night on Sports Desk, was as big a factor in that third period where the Panthers looked like themselves. They spent time in the offensive zone. They got pucks deep. That line's a key factor. Fins for the wins for the win when it comes to the catch. Jalen Waddle, well, nice. Yeah, there you go. Let's hear from another one, Alexander Barkov, and he talked about just what you mentioned, how they got better as that game went on. I think it's uh, confidence in our game that we we want to we want to build. Uh, obviously, we want to have good good first and second periods as well. But we want to keep building every every single period and be at our best uh, at the end of the game. So there's no no real theory to that. But uh, it's all about the hard work and just keep grinding and keep believing in us and keep trusting the systems. All right, Goldie, if that system ends up rolling over from that third period into the game one here in the opening period and beyond, what's this series going to look like for the Panthers? Well, look, only five teams ever in the history of hockey have come back in the Stanley Cup final when down 0-2. We've talked about this. No one's been able to do it for months now to try to yeah. beat the Florida Panthers four games out of five, and that's what the task would be for the Oilers if the Panthers can win game two. Now, Edmonton's been a great bounce-back team. McDavid, after getting shut out, averages two points a game the next game at Edmonton this is not unfamiliar territory the last six times they've lost game one it happens to them they've won game two five times they've wow. got to throw the kitchen sink mm -hmm. at the Panthers tonight because they're not stupid they're pros they know going down 0-2 even though they're going to go back to a madhouse in Edmonton is a real tough situation for the Panthers try to seize the opportunity and if they're able to when this whole thing is over, perhaps Edmonton will look back at that first game yeah. and say, hey, we need to convert in some of those chances. That's the game we let get away. We'll see if Edmonton can, can bounce back, but the Panthers are going to feel like they have seven guys on the ice with the way this building was rocking in game one. We know it will be the same way here in game two. Goldie, thanks as always, and thanks to you for joining us for Hunt for the Cup. Puck drop just after 8 o'clock. We'll see if the Cats can get out to a 2-0 series lead here in the Stanley Cup final. Thanks for joining us.
Hunt for the Cop on CBS News Miami is sponsored by your Volkswagen dealers of South Florida. Check out local offers at VWFlorida.com.